Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Here are today's top headlines. Lear and Delphi are also under investigation for automotive electronic suppliers. Hummer dealers in Shanghai rejoice that Tang Zhang didn't get to buy it. And Jaguar and Land Rover post a profit for Tata. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, February 26, 2010, and now the news. Well, a little bit more information on that investigation into automotive electronic suppliers is coming out. The Detroit Free Press reports that American suppliers Delphi and Lear are being investigated by the European Commission. It quotes Lear's chairman Bob Rossiter as saying, he is confident the company is not involved in any anti-competitive practices. Cascada, that startup company that makes cellulosic ethanol, which General Motors invested in, was named one of the 50 most innovative companies by Technology Review, the journal of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Other companies on the list include Apple, Google, and Twitter. Cascada was named because it is now producing ethanol that can be cost competitive with gasoline unsubsidized almost anywhere in the world. And in related news, the Detroit News reports that Toyota's lobbyists in Washington were concerned about mandates for flex fuel vehicles that can run on blends of gasoline and ethanol. Toyota stated that it would cost $200 to $300 per vehicle or up to $600 million a year. I find that strange. GM says it costs about $75 to convert a vehicle for flex fuel capabilities and that it is spending $100 million a year. Thanks to a new six and a resurrected five liter V8, the Detroit News reports that the 2011 Mustang racked up almost 11,000 pre-orders. That's three times more than the 2010 model. Surprisingly, the V6 is accounting for 50% of the orders. And in other related news, Ford announced output numbers for its new Super Duty pickups. The 6.2 liter gasoline V8 delivers 385 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque while the brand new 6.7 liter Power Stroke diesel puts out 390 horsepower and get this, 735 pound-feet of torque. BMW is showing its 5 Series Active Hybrid model ahead of the Geneva Motor Show. The car uses a derivative of the hybrid 7 Series drivetrain with some changes. It features a larger 40 kilowatt electric motor up from 15 kilowatts in the 7 and a larger battery pack both of which allow the 5 to operate in electric-only mode at low speeds. Instead of a twin-turbo V8 under the hood, it features a force-fed inline-six borrowed from the 535i. Lexus, too, has pulled the wraps off a new hybrid model it's showing at Geneva. The hatchback, CT200H, is powered by a 1.8-liter four-cylinder engine. Toyota hasn't released output numbers for the powertrain, but it's probably pretty close to the Prius's combined 134 horsepower. The CT200H can run up to 1.2 miles in EV mode at speeds up to 28 miles an hour. GM is looking for potential buyers of Hummer after its deal fell apart with Chinese company Tang Zhang. According to Bloomberg, GM will not comment on who's interested, but it's still likely Hummer will be shut down. And in other Hummer news, dealers in China are so ecstatic that Tang Zhang lost out on Hummer that they've raised the price of their vehicles. According to Gascu, since GM probably will wind the brand down, dealers are anticipating they'll become scarce, and so they're raising prices. An H3 is selling for around $3,000 more, and the price for an H2 just went up by nearly $15,000. Jaguar and Land Rover reported their first quarterly profit since being bought out by Tata in 2008. According to Bloomberg, the company made a profit of $90 million thanks to increased sales and by laying off over 2,000 workers. Even though it was good news for the company, Tata purchased Jaguar Land Rover for $2.5 billion from Ford, so it's still got a ways to go before it pays off that investment. Coming up next, we'll take a look at how cars and movies go together. The 
auto industry and the film industry practically grew up together. Cars have been heavily featured in movies ever since movies were first made. That's why this week's AutoLine Detroit looks at the role automobiles have played in the movies, the funny ones, the serious ones, and the weird ones. Joining me for that show are Jim Hall from 2953 Analytics, Todd Lassa from Motor Trend, and the auto extremist himself, Peter DeLorenzo. Here's a clip from that show that I hope makes you want to watch the whole thing. I gotta ask Jim about a movie because I've never heard of this, and maybe Todd and, and Peter, you know this too. A movie called Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. What <laughs> <Yeah>. the? <laughs> Explain it's, this one. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Russ Meyer exploitation film. Yeah, it's yeah. really, it's, it's, it's almost unviewable, but not quite. The opening of it has this astonishingly incompetently put together race with these three rather voluptuous women racing their sports cars, an MGA, uh, an Austin Healey, and I think a Porsche 356, in the middle of uh, El Mirage Black Lake, or uh, Dry Lake, which is in north of Southern California, and, or north of LA, and they have tires to sort of race around. And, and they do this for like five minutes in the opening movie, and you're like, and there's three very violent women, by the way. You leave that part out. I mean, well, they're yeah. very, there's, there's a subtext there that, you know, we won't go into here. I mean, it's, but it's, it's, a, it's a cult film, and there are people that will talk about the movie, and rather than talk about the, uh, the, the, the three women's rather um, obvious charms, shall we say, <laughs> they, they, they talk instead about this incredibly bizarre race where they're racing each other around the tires in the start of the because film. you could watch any Russ Meyer movie and talk about the women and their... their they're uh, Dagmars? Uh, Dagmars, thank you. Uh, well, it, it's just, it's one of those things, but it's, it's, this apart. And it's, it's of, of all his films, there's an argument that that one, to some way, is, is weird, really, because it's, it's, it's often this weird tangent in the start, and it, it's like, wow. You'll be able to catch the whole program later today at our website, AutolineDetroit.tv. Okay, it's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time to answer this week's trivia question. We asked you... What was the first product the Toyota family manufactured well before they made cars? And the correct answer is, they made looms, weaving looms. And the winner is Paul Black from Grafton, Ontario. Congratulations, Paul. You just won an AutoLine Detroit coffee mug. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.